Welcome back to the Living Markets. The World Economic Forum 2019 has now officially closed, ended for this year. So let's cross to Davos now and to our editor-in-chief, Urs Gredek, who's been following developments all week for us, Urs. Um, it's fair to say that there was a lot of concern this week about the global economic slowdown. Would it be fair to say, though, that the atmosphere was, was pretty gloomy? I wouldn't maybe say gloomy, but it was quite clear that there was a kind of a cloud of pessimism in the air, uh, especially when you compare to last year, where there was a lot of optimism and a lot of very positive business leaders, positive politicians. Uh, compared to that, I must say the, uh, the, the mood was a bit more pessimistic, although there were always people as well who said, come on, I mean, uh, it's, it's not that bad either. Yes, uh, the economy and, and you know, the growth is slowing, uh, but there are still some good indicators there's still some good signs and uh, I think uh, an interesting quote for example was from uh, Axel Weber the chairman of UBS saying uh, come on guys you know maybe 2018 wasn't as good as you claim and I'm pretty sure that 2019 won't be as bad as you all claim. A bit of perspective then uh, was the global slowdown the biggest talking point do you think over the last four days or perhaps even Brexit that was never far from the headlines either. Uh, well, you're spot on, Hannah, because absolutely those were the two uh, issues, the two topics and the two challenges that everybody was talking about. You know, the WEF is all about rankings. They love to rank problems and challenges and, and opportunities. And uh, whenever we talk to people what their biggest challenge uh, for 2019 is, it was exactly that. It was uh, the, the, the uh, slowing growth of the economy. It was the Brexit. And let's not forget, it was a third theme, a third topic as well. And that was the trade relationship between the US and China. So uh, the trade worries, uh, a possible trade war, that was probably uh, number one on uh, the agenda of, of a lot of businessmen. But you're absolutely right in saying that the other two were uh, very high up as well. OK, it seems to me then that the theme of this year's event, Globalisation 4.0, really kind of captivated those three themes into one. Uh, do you think that it was properly addressed or fully addressed while you were there, this Globalisation 4.0? I mean, you know, the thing about these themes at the WEF, I mean, they, they're, they're always very nice. They're not always understandable. So a lot of journalists struggle as well uh, in knowing what exactly they mean. And uh, you find yourself often after five days and you keep asking yourself the question, so has this theme really been addressed or have they really talked about what they wanted to talk about? And as always, they talk about so many different things that in the end, the theme always fits. And I think that was the case this year as well. But uh, if you remember correctly from last year. Uh, there was a lot of talks about protectionism, of course, also with the visit of President Trump. So I think globalization was a kind of a counterpoint that they wanted to bring across. Yes, uh, people talked about it, but I wouldn't say that it was the kind of overshadowing theme of uh, the WEF 2019. All right, let's talk about some of your interviews then, Urs. You sat down with Thomas Jordan, who is, of course, the chairman of the Swiss National Bank, and you asked him what is, which is probably his undoubtedly his favourite question uh, currently, and that's about interest rates. So let's just take a listen uh, to what he had to say. Well, the monetary conditions that we have at the, this moment, so that means the negative interest rate of minus 75 basis points and the willingness to intervene if necessary on the foreign exchange market are the right monetary conditions and the appropriate ones for the given situation. We have a very low inflation. If you look at our inflation forecast, we had to lower it even. Uh, we have no risk of overheating. And at the same time, we have still a fragile situation on the foreign exchange market and an increased uncertainty in the global economy. So as long as uh, uh, those circumstances prevent, there is really no need to change our monetary policy. It was successful in the past, so we could steer the economy through difficult times with maintaining price stability and supporting the economy, and we will continue to do that. And Urs, I mean, Thomas Jordan, he never really likes to give very much away, does he? Not really. Could you tell? I mean, I, I'm going to ask you back. Did you hear anything new in that response? Absolutely. I mean, I think I could have probably guessed what he was going to say. But there was a lot more to that interview than we just showed, of course, Urs. And we'll be showing that right here on CNN Money Switzerland uh, next week, I believe. Uh, you also spoke to Swiss President Uli Maurer. He was uh, giving his thoughts on a range of issues, including Brexit um, and the impact that Brexit was having on uh, Switzerland negotiating itself with Europe. Uh, but here he is actually speaking about uh, the Swiss relationship with the United States. Take a listen. 
And I think that we will have a meeting uh, in perhaps in April in Washington and that we have more contacts with the administration. We are on a good way now. We have a lot of more contacts with the new administration than before with Obama. So are you uh, confident for an agreement between the US and uh, Switzerland? I think that we will find, find some solutions in this, this direction. We have the same interests and uh, the administration from President Trump is very, uh, very good for discussions for us. So, or as the United States better sort out its government shutdown, Switzerland's coming, apparently. Well, I was quite surprised about the optimism of uh, President Maurer. Uh, he seemed to be uh, well informed about what's uh, going on and what could be uh, on the horizon for that relationship. But what has to be said, I mean, the relationship between Switzerland and the US is one thing. Uh, the other thing and the other more pressing relationship, of course, is the relationship between Switzerland and the European Union. There as well, President Maurer was uh, very optimistic. He probably has to be, you will tell me. But uh, if you listen to other uh, leaders here in Davos, and I was speaking to uh, some of the business leaders as well, uh, there is less optimism in the air. Uh, when we talked about the issues that people talk about here, of course there are the global issues, but if you talk to uh, Swiss entrepreneurs, to uh, Swiss politicians, to the Swiss business leaders, uh, that question uh, of, of, of that still not solved uh, relationship between Bern and Brussels is very high on the agenda, because don't forget, for every business that we talk about here, uh, Europe is, is probably one of the main partners, if not the most important partner. So as long as this relationship isn't really solved and as long as, 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 as that agreement hasn't been agreed upon, uh, there's going to be uncertainty. And I know it's one of the biggest cliches uh, there ever was, but it's true that uncertainty isn't good for business. And that's what the people say here as well. OK, well, certainly the world's media loves to descend on Davos for this event. But do you think that that perhaps makes the uh, Davos event more than it actually is? That's always difficult to say, I must say. This is, uh, I think, my ninth WEF, and it's always been a question of, you know, how, how big is it really? How important is it really? Uh, is it done bigger through the media than it really is? And is there even a chance that uh, things get solved or uh, issues get talked about? But if you look at, you know, the guest list, for example, I mean, yes, there were some very big names missing, and, and I think you could feel that this week. So that, for example, the American uh, delegation had to cancel their visit, uh, including President Trump, of course, and uh, that French President Macron wasn't here, or uh, the British Prime Minister Theresa May wasn't here either. I think you could, you could sense that, but still, however, there were some very big names, some very important names here. So as long as the WEF uh, uh, can bring those names, those people up here in the Swiss mountains, I think the importance is still pretty big. Okay, and interviews aside, Urs, what was your personal Davos moment of 2019? I must say I was quite impressed by a, a very young lady. You uh, have heard about uh, Greta Thunberg, who was here today. She's the climate activist, 16-year-old from uh, Sweden. She came here by train, a 40-hour uh, train ride. And you wouldn't believe how many journalists were around her. So uh, uh, what would have been the case with President Trump, maybe, or uh, with uh, President Macron, you had it with uh, that 16-year-old Greta. So I've hardly seen uh, so many journalists around someone uh, like today around uh, that 16 year old and I thought maybe it's also kind of symbolic for uh, the next generation because that's something that people talked a lot about and uh, as usual you uh, talk a lot about the young people but not with the young people and with Greta it was quite amazing how uh, all these business leaders and the politicians uh, maybe for the first time actually had to face someone so young here and had to actually uh, answer to her, her challenging question and if, if there's one thing that that will uh, uh, stuck with me maybe uh, it was also on a panel speaking about the the next generation uh, there was Bono on the panel uh, like he always is every year and they were talking about the next generation and he uh, kind of urged the business leaders here and he warned them he told them uh, look uh, the next generation is on the train so you either get on that train or you'll finish up under the train and he also told them uh, now you have the choice 
You can be either someone who sets fire or you can be the firefighter. So now you have to uh, make your choice. Uh, quite honestly, I'm not a big U2 fan, but that was quite impressive what he said. <laughs> OK, it was good. Thank you very much indeed for joining us from Davos. OK, well, Aura's mentioned there that you can watch some of the panels, the highlights certainly, of a selected number of panels on our website, cnnmoney.ch. We'll be putting more up over the course of this weekend. Not only that, as we've just discussed, WEF is a massive event, so we'll be bringing you fresh content from next week. That's it for me on tonight's Living Market. Stay with us, though, for the rest of tonight's Swiss Pulse. Bye-bye.